So in this lab, we want to understand the differences between the North American datum 1927 and the North American datum 1983. We're going to compute how this geodetic datum was shifted whenever the North American datum was recalculated in 1983. And what we're going to do is we're going to make one of these maps here that you can see on the on NOAA's website uh, showing the datum shift in latitude longitude. And if you look here off of Wikipedia, they also have a nice one where they add two datum shifts together and make this, this map showing the differences. The original datum was very focused on the East Coast and with the center being in Kansas. That's why you can see here on the east, Eastern part of the United States you have very small datum shifts from the difference between NAD27 and NAD83. But if you look here off into the West Coast, you'll see that the datum shift is a lot higher. What we're going to do is that we're going to take shape files for uh, the USGS 24K uh, quads and calculate how much each of those have shifted. So to do this we're going to use spatial analyst tools and we're going to use ArcMap. So I'm going to go ahead and launch up ArcMap. And I'm also going to get my data that I need for this exercise. So I'm going to go into my computer. I'm going to look at the S drive, and whenever I look here at the S drive, there is lab to data. And here you can see the two zip files states NAD83 and USGS 24 quads. Um, go ahead and copy that onto your file onto your folder. And I'm going to put that on my desktop lab to one. And once you have it in there, go ahead and click on it and extract them. So I just click and I say extract all. Actually, a faster way to do extractions is if you right click and you just say extract all. And I'm just going to want to put it in lab 2.1. I'm going to call it data. Extract. So that's extracted in there. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the 24Ks. Again, putting in the folder data. Okay, so what I want to do now is go into my arc map and make sure that I have the spatial analyst tools turned on. Um, some of the process, some of the tools that ArcMap use, you're going to have to turn them on with the extensions. Now you see when I go to my extensions, I already have spatial analyst turned on, but on your computers, it might not be checked on. So go ahead and check spatial analyst tools on. That's going to allow you to use the spatial analyst toolbars and tools. So if you look here. I can find here I have spatial analyst tools and on top of that in my arc toolbox I have here a whole toolbox just for spatial analyst tools. Those tools will only work if you have the extension on. If you see an error message saying that your your tools aren't on and you don't have access to it, make sure that you do customize extensions and turn on spatial analyst. Another good one's 3D analyst and we're going to be using those a lot throughout the semester. So go ahead and take those layers that we extracted and load them into ArcMap. You can do that by clicking the Add Data button here, and then you're going to get here your Add Data 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 Log uh, dialog. Um, your folder right now you might already have your desktop mapped. If you don't have your desktop mapped, you can click on here Connect to Folder. That button will allow you to select the folder and connect to it. So I'm going to hit OK on this level, the folder, and then now I'll have it saved as a bookmark in my art catalog. If I go in here to data now, I can see that I have these two shape files. Again, notice the difference between the way it looks in Arc GIS and the way it looks in Windows Explorer. You can see here that in Windows Explorer, oh wait, this is the wrong one, one second, Lab 2.1, data, you can see here it shows up as multiple files, while in our catalog it shows up as one single file. So this is why it's very important if you want to rename files, you rename them here in the Arc catalog. You can do that here in the Add Data, or you can do it here within this Arc catalog tab on your side screen here. Another thing that you can do is um, under your folder connections in your R catalog tab, 
you can actually drag and drop data directly from here into ArcMap. So I said just click on it, drag it into my table of contents, let go, and it adds it in. Do the same thing with USGS, the 24 case. See, so now if I look at the difference here, I have here now a bunch of points that are just all the different quads. Every little single square of the USGS quads. If I click on information button, which is a button over here on the side toolbar with the eye on it, and I click on one of them, you'll see here it'll give you the information of the quad, Colorado, last chance, so forth. If you look up the USGS quad, what does it mean? It's, it means a quadrangle, and these are how the topographic maps were originally created. Um, the, the quads are based off of longitude, latitude, and there's different uh, degrees depending on the different levels, depending on which quad you want to look at. Um, you can see here that the 124K uh, scale topographic maps is the seven and a half minute quad, and that's the normal quads that we usually work with today. In the historic maps, normally you have different quads like uh, 15 minute quads and so forth. The topographic maps were uh, something that took a very <laughs> long time to do. You can see the projects from 1879 to 1992 and you, they went from you know field serving all the way up to uh, GIS systems to make the topo map. Now they have everything out of the national map which is uh, the new way that the the U.S. government is doing their the, the mapping. The idea is creating one single map, mapping source. And so far, uh, there's a lot of times you can get some good information on this uh, national map. You can see here uh, an example of a topographic map. Uh, like, you can get these off the internet and download them and so forth. Um, this is going to be the quad, seven and a half minutes by seven and a half minutes. So what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to look at how much these quads, the center of the quad, how much it has changed, and then we're going to end up getting the datum shift for each quad and taking that and using spatial analysts to make uh, that vector and then later those lines showing the datum shift. So now that you have this added in and you're understanding what's going on, um, one thing that we should also think about is that we're not going to include Alaska and Hawaii. But if we look here on the states, I say zoom to layer, you can see here Alaska and Hawaii are included. Um, you can always right click layers and zoom to layer to quickly be able to go to them. Um, we might not want that. So I'm going to say let's go ahead and remove Alaska and Hawaii. And the way we're going to do this is by using the toolbar called Editor Toolbar. Go ahead and access Editor Toolbar by going to uh, Geo Processing, or sorry, Customize Toolbars, Editor Toolbar. The other option is if you right click on here and choose uh, Editor Toolbar. Once you have your Editor Toolbar open, you can take this and start editing. And this is going to allow you to, to actually change the data sets, change the shape files that are on there. Once you're in the editing session, you'll see here this editing window pops up on the side here and you can see that we have states NAT83 clicked and we can do things like add in, uh, draw, extra shape files and so forth. But one thing that we're going to do now is that we're going to use this tool here called edit tool. If you click on that, it will allow you to select polygons. So I clicked on the edit tool and the editor toolbar, clicked on it, select the polygon and then I can just hit the delete button and it goes away. Go ahead and do the same thing with Hawaii 2 and hit delete. We can also um, look in the attribute tables and we can also select states from here and also do the same thing with the deleting. And now you can see here that we have uh, 49 total. That's because we have the 48 states plus I think Washington DC. Let's see if we have that sort of sending District of Columbia. So pretty much we have 49 polygons here, 48 for the 48 states, and then one for Washington DC. When you're happy with the with the way the data uh, the way the data is now, go ahead and hit editor, save edits. That's gonna actually save the edit that you just did and make it permanent. I can go ahead and close editor now here, or go ahead and say stop editing and get out of the edit session.
this will also be a good time to save. So we're going to hit File, Save As, and save our ArcMap document. Remember, saving ArcMap document doesn't save the actual GIS data, just saves links and how you're using the GIS data. So go ahead and click here. I'm going to go ahead and save in my Lab 2 folder, Lab 2 1, and save the ArcMap document in there. So now that we're ready to do uh, the analysis, I'm going to take the pause here, and the next video will actually get into the lab while this was all just set up. So see you in the next video.